What measure do you use in your life to distinguish between truth and falsehood? Find out what you should be using today on Redemption Youth Online. How do you know what you know? How do you know what is good or bad? How do you know what is true or false? How do you know what is acceptable or unacceptable? Well, if you're anything like me, someone somewhere along the lines told you. Maybe it was a coach, maybe it was a parent, maybe it was a teacher or a classmate, maybe it was the TV, but you took what they told you and you put it in the framework for how you view the world. I mean, if we know anything, it's that what we believe determines what we perceive. And what you believe about the world determines how you perceive the world, determines how you interact and live in the world. But what if the person was lying to you? What if the person intentionally lied to you so you would live a life that you were never supposed to live? Well, then you would believe the wrong thing. You would be perceiving the wrong thing. You'd be living the wrong thing. Your whole life would be based on a lie. And that is exactly what Jude is trying to get his audience to consider in the letter that he writes. What's going on in this early church is these false teachers have come in spreading lies about who God is and how to have a relationship with him. And they're trying to get the early church to believe the wrong thing so they perceive God wrongly so that they live lives totally distant from God but Jude is able to see through the lies. And he's able to do that because he's based his reality on the truth of God's word. How do I know that? Because Jude in his letter includes tons of Old Testament references. I would argue that he includes more in his little letter than many New Testament authors do in their whole book. Because he knew God's word, he was able to see through the empty words of the false teachers. And in verse 11, he compares them to three Old Testament characters who also were trying to corrupt God's people and lead them astray. Here's what the Bible says. What sorrow awaits them, for they follow in the footsteps of Cain, who killed his brother. Like Balaam, they deceive people for money, and like Korah, they perish in their rebellion. The first person that Jude references is Cain. Cain is the son of Adam and Eve, the brother of Abel. And Cain and Abel in the book of Genesis would bring God sacrifices. Abel would bring God the best, and God loved Abel's sacrifices. But Cain would bring God less. God despised Cain's sacrifices. And he said, look, if you are going to please me, you have to give me your whole heart. I don't want the less. I want the best. Give me your best. But instead of picking up his best and giving it to God, he picked up a a rock and he beat his brother to death. And he killed Abel out of jealousy because Abel had a right relationship with God and Cain didn't. And what Judah's saying is, look, these teachers are doing the exact same thing. They're like Cain. They are jealous of you. They are jealous of your right standing with God. And they want to kill you, not physically, but spiritually. The next person that Jude references is Balaam. Balaam was a sorcerer found in the book of Numbers, and he was paid by a king to curse God's people for personal gain. And just like Balaam, Jude's saying, look, these false teachers are coming to you, and for personal gain, they are looking to sell you out, not to curse you with their words, but to lead you on a path that curses you eternally. The last person that he compares them to is Korah. Korah lived in the same time period as Moses, and Korah made the people hate Moses, grumble against Moses, become discontent with Moses' godly leadership. And Judah's saying, look, just like Korah, these false teachers are coming in, making you unhappy with the godly leadership God has put over you. They're doing it for selfish reasons, and ultimately, if you follow them, you will be destroyed, just like Korah's followers were destroyed in his rebellion. Jude was able to distinguish what was false from what was true because he didn't put his hope in man's words. He put his hope in the word of God. And if you and I do the same, we will also be able to recognize what is right or wrong, what is true or false, what is good or bad. We need to know the Bible like Jude knew the Bible so we can hold on to what is true. And how did Jude know all he did about the Old Testament? Well, his parents taught him. Parents, at this time, why don't we pause the video and have a family discussion based on the questions on the screen. 